Russian dictator Vladimir Putin has destroyed the country's medical sector in his 20 years in power. The situation is catastrophic. This topic was unexpectedly raised on the air of the pro-government radio station Komsomolskaya Pravda. Propagandists discussed the mass layoffs of medical workers, especially ambulance workers in Russia. People do not want to work because of low salaries and very heavy workloads. Ambulances are scattered all over the country, especially in small towns. The lion's share of our teams can only be called teams conditionally. Instead of two doctors, one doctor often leaves there and he cannot perform resuscitation as required. This is a completely different risk for patients. Our number of teams is 1.5 to 2 times lower than the standard. In rural areas, we do not have medical teams, not to mention resuscitation, psychiatric, obstetric teams. We have never heard of this. The shortage of personnel is huge. Paramedic teams in rural areas work alone. There are no doctors. There are one to two teams for several districts. The route is 200 kilometers or even more. You can wait seven to eight hours and this is not an ambulance at all. The Russian propagandist complained. He also specified that despite the disaster, the new Russian budget did not include funds to increase the salaries of medical workers. Apparently, Putin prefers spending money on killing Ukrainians and destroying a neighboring country rather than improving the lives of Russians. Recall Putin is crowned again for another six years. Legally, he can remain in office until 2036, when he will turn 84. By then, Russia may be even larger, but with fewer people as population decline continues, advanced by wars and with resources depleted as oil and gas supplies dwindle. In such a scenario, Russia will continue to be ruled by a physically declining tyrant, still feared by his timid associates. They have seen what happens to those who cross his path. But Vladimir Putin is not immortal and, in that sense, his time in history is little more than a tick of a clock. Dozens of Russian drones targeted the Ukrainian capital Kiev in a nighttime attack that lasted eight hours, authorities said Thursday, as Russia kept up its relentless pounding of Ukraine after almost 1,000 days of war. Russian forces fired lone drones and swarms of drones that entered Ukrainian airspace from various directions and at a variety of altitudes, officials said, in an apparent attempt to stretch air defense systems and unnerve city residents. Ukrainian air defenses neutralized three dozen drones but falling debris caused damage to a hospital and residential and office buildings in the capital, local authorities said, including a blaze on the 33rd floor of an apartment building. At least two people were reported injured. Drone attacks on Kiev have recently been occurring almost daily, with the nighttime explosions and the continuous buzzing sound of drones keeping the city on edge. Russia is currently deploying about 10 times more Iranian-made Shahid drones than it was this time last year, Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky said earlier this week. Soldiers in a Ukrainian artillery battery on the front lines of the country's east were only vaguely aware of American election results pointing to Donald Trump's victory Wednesday but firm in their hopes for the next president of the United States. I hope that something will change, the National Guard's 13th Cardia Brigade commander, who goes by the name, Mozart, said in the hours before Trump's win was confirmed. Mozart who did not give his name in keeping with Ukrainian military protocol is among many Ukrainians who hope that Trump will hold the line on American support for their country. Andriy, 
who goes by Roddick or relative, was resigned to the fact that he has no power to influence the American vote. As long as Ukraine holds on, they are safe. As soon as they stop supporting Ukraine and Ukraine falls, they can experience for themselves what it is like to be Ukraine, he said. It was under Trump that the United States first sent weapons to Ukraine in its fight against Russia, in 2017. Those Javelin anti-tank missiles were crucial to Ukraine's ability to fend off the full-scale invasion in 2022. But Trump overall is wary of U.S. involvement in foreign conflicts. Fourth, 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 fourth.